So it's a beautiful summer's day, you can see we've got a lovely lake behind me, we're in the Cotswolds Water Park, a very very special piece of water this, um, it's got plenty of tench in it and that is what we're doing, we're tench fishing, but we're doing it with a bit of a difference because this one it's not just going to be about catching loads of tench, we're going to dig a bit deeper than that, um, we're going to look at what we're doing and how we're fishing underwater with the help of Mr Rob use. Uh, not really been done, you've, not for tench anyway, you've probably seen it being done for carp, but today we're going to put my tench fishing through the microscope, which a bit nervous about, but um, kind of looking forward to it as well. So without further ado, let's get on the bank and let's get fishing for tench. Hello mate, how are we doing? Very good, how are you? Yeah, all good, it looks tench central this, doesn't it? It does, it looks fantastic, doesn't it? Let's talk about tench lakes, you know, you've caught a lot of tench, you've caught a lot of decent tench, what is a decent tench these days? You know, a, a double is the holy Most grail, the dream. but, but yeah. six, seven, eight pounds, still good fish, yeah, aren't Yeah, I, th I think if you're catching fish that are sort of like six pound, yeah, I'd be happy with that all day long. Absolutely. Yeah. And you, but here you've got an outside chance of something bigger. Yeah, yeah, the other nice thing about this place actually is that there are Hardly any carp in the lake too, which is quite nice because it means that, and yes, this is a carp angler saying it, forgive me, we're not going to be bothered as much yeah. by nuisance species. We're Absolutely. going out for tench. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you look for in a tench lake? What makes a good tench lake? Um, you know, th this is perfect. You know, you've got an awful lot of structure in the lake and you've got a lot of weed, lots yeah. of weed beds, plenty of natural food, I would imagine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, like you said yourself, uh, not too many carp. Yeah, absolutely. Well, this yeah. is Hawcott Lakes. This is the Tench Lake at Hawcott. And part of the reason I'm here today is because we would like to see what's going on below the surface. As far as we're aware, other than Tench being picked up on carp films, there hasn't been an underwater study specifically on Tench yet. So we're going to get some rods in the water. You're going to do your style. I'm going to be doing my style, which is obviously carp fishing, uh, scale down. Uh, and then we're going to see the difference. Are we achieving what we want to achieve? So without further ado, I'll get out the peg, go and set myself up. You're already halfway there. Yeah. Uh, and we'll regroup in a minute and get under the surface and have a look what's going on. Sounds good. Could be good. So what plays to our advantage here, it's only a three acre lake, meant that we were able to go around it a couple of times, look at every single swim. Uh, there is a lot of structure in the lake, a lot of weed beds, and in fact in a lot of the swims that kind of limits your options. Uh, this one, the reason I chose it is that I just felt that I can get out into the lake more, I've got more options, uh, the water's very clear, I don't think they're going to be in the edge during the day, and I think I've got a spot that I can fish during the day. Uh, also, I've got a reasonable depth of water here. So, went round, it's only an average depth of about four foot. Uh, down there it's two foot. Uh, and here, I could see straight away, I had my Polaroids on. I could see I've got a little bit more depth to play with. And that's why I chose a swim. So, in terms of the, the method that I'm using, uh, it's a classic flatbed feeder, um, so uh, nothing revolutionary there. On the flatbed feeder, I'm going to add pellets. Um, I've got a short hook length and I've got a wafter on a hair, uh, on a hair rig. Um, everything is just slept, stepped up slightly, right the way from the rod to the main line to the hook length, slightly larger hook, basically just to combat all of the weed that we've got here. There's a fair chance that we could get a weeded up fish and we just need to make sure that we're using strong enough tackle to get those fish in the net. This swim really is a piece of me when it comes to tench fishing. It looks absolutely fantastic. Big weed in front. 
I've got to say that I did like next door as well because there's something about having a horseshoe in front of you. It just looks lovely. But this one looks pretty good to me for a number of reasons. For a start, there's a lot of weed everywhere and Tench, as we know, love weed. There's a really nice big clear gravel area out there, but as attractive as that looks and it's clear that it's been cleared by something, it's really, really, really shallow. I've had a flick round with the marker float earlier just lightly just poking in here there and everywhere trying to find what the depths are like and it's two foot deep on top of that which for me is too shallow maybe if i was carp fishing it might be worth a look but there's no cover it's too bright i just don't think they're going to go there i reckon that the majority of the time in the day these fish are going to be in the weed and they're going to come out through the hours of darkness and early morning so the margins look lovely just in front of me here there's a small bay with a cut through going into the area that really can't be fished from this swim. So I think there's fish in that middle bit and they'll come through that passing through spot. It's about three and a half foot deep, four foot deep, a little bit of silt on the bottom as well. Then on the right hand side, there's another similar one, but it's a bit deeper, but a bit harder on the bottom. And then when we come in really close, surprisingly now, there's a deeper bit of water just on this near margin. Now this happened a lot on gravel pits. You know, you would think that the middle is the deepest bit on lakes, but that's not always the case, particularly man-made ones and particularly gravel pits. There's humps, lumps and bumps all over the place. And where we can see reeds coming out through the surface, that's obviously shallow. Where we can see golden spots, that's obviously really shallow. At the moment, we want a bit more depth. And this margin down here has got a silty gully, four foot deep, and I'm convinced that that will be where Tench will be passing up and down through the course of the night and possibly early hours of the morning. So I've got three spots in this peg. I've only got two rods. I'm going to alternate between them. And my approach is going to be straightforward carp angling style on the buzzers, two slightly different rigs, bit of bait over the top, sit back, happy days. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to spod out um, some of the mix that I've got here in the bucket. Um, initially, I'm not going to put an awful lot out. I'll probably just put like a couple of spods over each rod. Uh, if you bear in mind as well, you know, this is only the small spod. Again, fairly shallow water. Don't want to make too much commotion. Uh, small spod, a couple over each rod. Uh, and here's the mix that I'm going to put in it. Um, so what we've got there is we've got krill ground bait, we've got two millimeter krill pellets, uh, we've got some hemp and you've got some crushed hemp as well. So I think what's important there is there's no large food items. Um, it's all small, uh, small particles. I think uh, tench are very much a grazing fish uh, and I certainly wouldn't want any large boilies or any large pellets in there. What I'd rather do is have small food items that I'm putting out into the swim, little and often, very, very accurately with this spot. Right, rods in the water time now. And as I said, I'm carp fishing, so I've got a very, very popular carp rig on here. Uh, it's a Ronnie rig, a small 12 mil yellow pop-up, small two ounce lead. And this is gonna go out onto that little gap over there because I'm sure that Tench will be in that little horseshoe or will be moving back and two through. So, all I'm going to do, a few mesh bags of pellets. I've got various different sizes of pellets and various different sizes of bags. It's really easy, quick, nick on like so. And then I'm going to underarm it out there just in front of where that weed bed is. Now I've had a couple of flicks around with the lead beforehand. And if I go too far into that gap, it's actually, oh, that felt lovely going down actually. I thought that might be a bit short, but that went down really nice. If I go too far into that gap, there is a bit of weed underneath the surface. So it's a little bit of a tricky one. I would have probably preferred to be a little bit further out, maybe another couple of feet and slightly to the right. But having felt that one down, it landed with a really nice crack. So I reckon that's not too bad. You notice I'm keeping a rod tip in the air just because I want to hold the line around the outside of this weed bed, let it sink from that end I think line lay here is going to be really important because it's so clear. So I'm just sinking it around the outside of that weed bed first before I pull it back underneath it and round the side. So that's the left hand rod in. The right hand is going to be one that may well move. So I'm going to fish it into that gap, but I may well pull it under this tree a bit later on as well. But that's one ready. And it's the sort of place that 
you know, we might get a bite. However, I'm expecting it to be more night time. So the question now is whether or not we leave it or whether we have another go just before dark and have a recast. But that did feel good. And I'll soon know because I'll be going underwater soon to have a look at it. So let that one settle. Next rod. Once again, similar sort of thing. Standard carp rig, but this one slightly lighter lead. Nylon hook link, and I've got a critically balanced pellet on this. And in addition, I've got two great big blobs of putty. So, nice small mesh bag, and this one's going to go to the right hand side once again over towards the back end of that gap. It just looks too good down there, and I'm going to bait under this tree as well. So, I know it's a bit harder down there. Bit of a flick, lovely, and that's gone down really nice there too. So, I've got a clear run on that. Just pull that line round without disturbing anything at all. I do not want that lead to move. And in my head, I think there's a bit of weed down there and I think that one is a bit clearer. Hence the reason why there's a pop-up on that one and a balanced bottom bait on this one. So I will have my free spool systems on at the moment but I'll be tightening them up in a second just to stop anything that picks the bait up shooting too far into that weed. Now I'll not put my bobbins on yet because I want that line just to settle first and I'll wait for it to sink in, settle down and then once it's settled after about five minutes that's when I'll put the bobbins on because like I say I want my line lay to be perfect around here. I want it well and truly out of the way particularly as the deepest bit is under the margins and I don't want to be getting in the way of carp and I don't want to be getting in the way of tench passing up and down that area. Okay, so Rob's about to go into the water. Uh, so here's exactly what I think has happened out there. Um, I've put a nice tight uh, patch of bait or two individual patches of bait, probably about a foot off of the weed uh, using the spawn. So I expect them to be around my feeders fairly accurately. I'd be interested to see if you can actually see the feed because it is actually a lot of small particles, as I said before. Um, in terms of how the rigs um, are, are, are sitting, I think in an ideal world, they would be perfect um, little moulds of pellet with a cherry on the top that is the little wafter and they'll all be sitting there in one piece, ready for a take. Um, in reality, you know, I'll be interested to see what happens because of course, here I've got some overhanging bars, having to punch them quite hard underneath that. Have they held together when they hit the water? I'll be interested to find out. Are you nervous? Uh, yeah, I am a little bit. I mean, no one's ever looked at my rigs underwater before, so I'll be interested to see what they look like. Uh, I think ideally, the feeders would all be intact. Perfect little dome of two millimetre pellets with a cherry on top. Um, I think that's ideally what they'd look like. Why do you want them to look like that? Um, the aesthetics of it. No, no, I don't know. Um, I just think that um, it's almost like a solid bag. I want a fish to come in and really hoover up the lot and take the, hoover, uh, the hook bait with it. Don't get me wrong, I don't think it's a disaster if they don't look like that. I don't think, and I, I'm not sure they will. Um, but I mean, even, even even if the hook baits come out of the feeder, I've got bait round my hook bait. So, so what's the bait like round it? Is it is it wide? Is it tight? How much bait have you put out? Are you bang on the spot? What's the spot like? Okay, so to be honest, um, Ty saw me do an absolutely rogue cast on it. Awful. When when that happens. I just pull it, I pull it back. I just don't want it even near the spot. I'd rather it landed at my feet. Um, so that happened once. Um, I would say the rest of them were pretty good, I, I think. Um, so, what, half a dozen spots, but small, half size spots, you've got to think, half so a dozen or so. Is it, is it a big carpet to bait quite tight or will it be clumps or what do you think it's going to look like on the bottom? So, on the bottom, I think it's going to be. Um, a, a, a bed of bait but not very widely spread. I think you're going to go over to that weed bed 
and I think hopefully you're going to find a strip of particles connecting my left hand rod to my right hand rod almost but no more than about a foot from the weed bed but sp spread quite nicely but tightly. And what's the bottom like? Um, it's actually quite hard it's not as soft as I thought it would be and it's certainly not weed so I'm quite pleased with the bottom it's 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 harder than I thought it would be. Fantastic so rock hard bottom one perfect method feeder in there cherry on the top <laughs> Lovely line of bait connecting one rod yeah, to the other. Absolutely. Line lay? Um, I think the line lay's kind of okay. You can see I've got this marginal reeds that I'm kind of going over. Um, I, I would rather my lines were slightly lower in the water, to be honest, but I think they're going to be all right. Fantastic. And rigs not tangled, all nice and steady. Yeah, they're going to be beautiful. <laughs> It's gone too far. Come on. It's going through down there. I think I'm going to struggle to pull it through just that clump there. <laughs> Yes, so that one was sitting all right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so this is insane, really. Um, only five, 10 minutes ago, Rob was over the spot looking at the rigs. Uh, he's literally just getting out of his wetsuit now. Um, we were gonna look at the footage to see what my rigs look like. Well, I know one was sitting all right because it's just landed this beautiful, beautiful tench. Um, a male. An absolute stunner, pleased with that. Let's have a look at what it was like underwater. And the first thing you'll see here is it is absolutely crystal clear. Yeah. Really clear. Little bits of weed, so you were sort of right. And there's a silty covering over the top of yeah. various different bits <clears throat> and bobs of gravel. So you can see your line just in the top corner there, just about make it out. But when it got down sort of near the bottom, it was really well hidden. Excellent. So We'll scroll forwards a little bit until we you find can something see a, interesting. A layer of silt there, definitely. Yeah, that's it. You come in there, you can see now, just in the top left hand <coughs> corner, this is where I've spotted right. your bait. And you thought red was going to be very discreet. Yeah, I'm surprised. I didn't think you'll be able to see my particles because there's nothing large in there, there's nothing blatant, but you can see that really clearly. Well, let's have a look here. As we zoom in on it, you can see just how obvious red is. Now, yeah. you can see a slight colour change there as the camera looks down and changes its colour. This is your right-hand rod. Right. So, bang on gravel. Yep. Little bait, falling out the side of it. It's just falling in front of your baited spot, but it looks absolutely fantastic. Really good. Yeah, pleased with that. Not quite the cherry on the top, but, but not pleased far with off. that. Yeah, yeah, not far very, off. Yeah, yeah. Let's have a look at this one now. So this is the spot itself. Is this, can, sorry, this is the left hand, is it? This is right. this is the right hand rod. The right hand still. Yeah. Okay. So this is this is your right hand rod, and you can see that it's a really nice little pile of food. The method feeder just works so well for this Does. style of fishing, doesn't it? Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. And there is some gravel there, so it is quite hard as you get towards the weed bed. Well, interesting. You were on a full-on gravel bar there. Yeah. So there is a gravel bar. As it drops back towards the weed bed, you can see there where your bait is landing. It's silt. So did that bait run along the face of the weed bed as I thought? No, it no. went. It was in a big pile. Okay. There. Yeah. That you can see there. Yeah. And then also going into the weed bed. What you did say earlier was correct. That yeah. you thought the weed bed was undercut a little bit, and was it, it was. Yeah. So, so this is looking over towards your left-hand rod as we look at it now. So you can see it goes from gravel into silt. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of particle there, and this is where we're coming to your other bits. This is the bit that you thought was your line, and it's not. It's back into the weed at the back end. Yeah. You can see that wall of weed there. Yeah. This is stuff that you can't see under the surface, but it, it does get undercut a little bit. And this is the one that you've just had the bite this on. This is the one, yeah. In silt. I can already see why that's looking not too bad. That looks it? absolutely fantastic, yeah. doesn't it? If we just absolutely. if we just pause it there for a minute, you can see <clears> just how good that presentation is. The silt there softer than I thought. 
Yeah, very, very yeah. soft there. It's about a little bit more than a knuckle depth, so it's probably four or five inches of silt. You'll also notice, and this is a mistake loads of people make all the time, that silt isn't black. Yeah. This silt is of a yellowy grey colour. But look at your presentation there. By using red particle over the top of it, you can see just how lovely that spread is. It's much more visual than I thought it would be, yeah. to be honest, the particle. Well, red stands out hugely yeah, underwater. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely hugely underwater. You can see there's a bit of a colour change in the, in the computer there as it's looking down. Sure. Um, but that's the spot, and that's what you've just had the bite on. Absolutely brilliant. Well... Happy with that. So hope I'm not surprised. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, it looked good. I remember looking at it thinking, thinking that's, a, that's bite. a bite. Yeah, you came out the water and said that's a bite. Genuinely didn't think yeah. it was going to come that quick. There's your rogue spawns. There was a couple that went over to the left hand <coughs> side. I think there were a couple in the weed as well. Was there was there any bait hung up in the weed? There was Could a little bit that? of bait hung up in the weed there. Look, you see there how deep oh, the silt quite is. Soft, yeah. So very soft, just up to knuckle depth. But so that method feeds is not sinking into it. It hasn't at all, and you'd think if it was a PVA solid bag with a heavy that lead, might. it would fall in, but yeah. a, a method feeder landing on top of it... Sort of flutters down a bit, doesn't it, I think? It's not been too bad, has it? It's come down flat. So this is the other side of the spot. This is going into the bay now, and you can see a very silty area, lovely and clean. It just looks absolutely brilliant. Yes. Oh, there we go. A oh. little present there. Every <laughs> now and again, you find the odd little bit of debris. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And that was quite are. black. Is it quite black under? Underneath it Underneath? is, yeah. Oh, okay. this, is, this is the thing with silt, you see. On the surface, yeah. it's the same colour as local stone. So around here we're in the Cotswolds, and you can see here, this is Cotswold stone colour. It's like that yellowy, goldeny colour. Right. Uh, you know, the light is dropping now, which makes it look a little bit more orange, but it's a yellowy, golden colour. So the left-hand side of the peg, where the reeds are, as we look at it above the water, that's silty. It's not very weedy, is it? Coming back Apart from the way. weed bank, obviously. No, nah, it, it, it's, it's pretty it's good. Fairly easy to it's pretty good. It, actually. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how much of this is left. You've just topped it up again. You've put yeah. a few more over the top of it. It'll be interesting to see tomorrow morning how much of this is left, because I'll be amazed if you don't have another bite here. And there's going to be fish revisiting it. Yeah. This is just another little look at, uh, at, at what that rig looks like before it went. If we pause it there, you can see how much bait there was, but what you can't see is your line. And your line lay was absolutely fantastic there. So I wonder if that fish has come in and hoovered all of this up before it's hit mine. I mean, because there's quite a lot out there, isn't there? There is. And, and, and the bite came... Pretty quick. Quick? Pretty quick. I, I, think, it's, I think it's just come it, straight it's in just and it's seen, seen that, that and gone on it. It's seen that bright and, hook bait. You know, when, yeah. when I've been down doing this on carp before, loads of people says, oh yeah, the hook bait's the last one to go. Actually, it you isn't. Don't a lot of the so. time it's Not the first. Not if you make it quite visual. Yeah, when you, when you look at that, that was a really good There's spot. no way it's hoovered all that up no. in that space. Not a chance. It's no. come in, it's seen the food there, it's seen that yellow cherry and it's thought, I'm having a bit of that. Yeah. Interestingly, just on the edge of the weed, you've got a, some, some bait in there, look. Mm. Can you see that little mark there? Yes. That's a feeding spot. So that's oh, an indentation okay. that's about that much deeper sure. than everywhere else. So something's been in there in the past and fed and mm. dug that out a little bit. So it's always interesting seeing them. So the baiting's maybe not as tight as I thought. Well, you haven't got... But, okay. You haven't got a patch. No. You had a small patch where your, your bait was. Which is what and you you've want. And got, you've got clumps all over the place. Which, which, which isn't the end of the world, I don't think. Not too no. bad. But well, not, not, not what I was trying to do, maybe. But, but okay. Maybe not. Got a bite. However, absolutely. <laughs> One fish down. You can see here, just coming out. So you're so close together with your rods, but actually the one's hard on gravel and the other one's in silt. So the bite so far has come on silt. Now, we don't know whether it's fish travelling out of that weed bed left going to the right yeah. or whether it prefers to feed on silt. So it would be really interesting to see. see. That is very obvious. So I think anything coming this way is going to see that. Right, let's have a look over towards my spot now. And... Very similar to yours. It is. A little bit more depth on this, and the light was very different. So you can see I'm just pointing out the odd pellet there, and this is my presentation just at the top of the screen. Because I don't know, that looks like a solid bag. Was it a solid bag? That was a mesh bag. Little oh, mesh okay. bag, small lead mesh bag. The presentation is very, very similar to yours, yeah. isn't it? You yeah, wouldn't, it is. You wouldn't really see the difference. No, you wouldn't. And, you know, I've got a small pop-up on there, little yellow pop-up. It looks absolutely fantastic. What's noticeable, if we pause it, is there isn't actually that much food around. No. I've catapulted six... Oh. Oh. Single beep. Oh. Mm. Um, I've catapulted pellets around. Yes. And I've put what I thought was a reasonable amount 
and actually it doesn't look like much. Not know, in you... comparison to what we've just looked at in front of my swim? No. You can see a few, and I, I wanted to fill the whole area with things that they can come in and just pick up on. What are those, eight mil? Those are, are mixes of fours, sixes and eights. Okay. But look at that on the area. The spot is absolutely brilliant. It's a, it's yes. a lovely gravel Clear. spot. However, it looks like there's hardly any bait there. Mm. Silt going back into the weed. And interestingly, I thought when you look at it above the surface, you can see that there's a pathway through. There's that gap. Mm. When you go below the surface, there isn't. It's so, not a dissimilar spot, no. is it? Not at very, all, really. very similar. Yeah. But there isn't a cut through than I thought there was. Okay. So that's a mistake from my point of view, and I've 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 made a fundamental mistake that I've corrected people on all the time. Just because you see something on the surface doesn't mean to say it's the same underneath. <clears throat> so there's the mix of pellets. Look, they blend in very well with the uh, with the lake bed. Yes. So. And a nice in a spread. So the, the it's. I, I want fish to come in and start picking all over the place, and there the yellow bait you can see stands out mm. a bit. So hopefully. What, why are you wanting that spread? Um, because. I saw you were fishing tight, and just yeah. for the purposes of this, I wanted to do it wide. The contrast. Just to see the difference. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, there's, there's no question that a nice tight condensed area works well. Mm. I'm thinking that if I spread the bait out a little bit, if, if fish come in, they'll be picking here and there, yes. and they'll stay in the area rather than grazing. Mm. So, once again, it'll be interesting to go back in tomorrow and see what bait's around. So, there we are. Not very long into dark, and exactly the same rod again has gone left hand rod. Um, I'd actually only just reset it because uh, I had a bit of an occurrence on it. Brought the rod in, sent it back out, and five minutes later, it rattled off. First thing in the morning now, sun's just coming up and it's been a really interesting night, uh, experiment-wise again. Lots of things have happened. Caught a few fish as well, had a few bites. Very, very nice. However, the story's quite an interesting one. I had a real savage occurrence on the left-hand rod at around about midnight. Now, I reckon that I got picked up and dropped. That was on the Ronnie, and uh, I think it might be down to the fact that the rig was just a bit too meaty, too much metal on it, etc., etc. Anyway, that was it. Thought any minute now it's going to go nothing happened started chucking it down with rain about two o'clock in the morning and lo and behold what happens as soon as it starts to rain yeah absolutely got a bite that was the right hander under the tree nothing on the left now i would normally have recast that left but for the purposes of this both nick and i discussed it and we thought no we'll leave the rods out that we think should have gone just to try and find out first thing in the morning what's happened with them anyway typically right hand has wiped the left hander out so i've popped it back out again Nothing, absolutely nothing for 10 minutes and then it's gone, bang, really quickly. And then another bite really, really quickly on a recast rod out there as well. No extra bait, literally just swinging bags out. So there's been nothing until between probably quarter past two and quarter past three in the morning. Three bites, that was it. Put the rods back out again. I've had nothing since then. Not seen anything, not had a sniff. Why? No idea. Really interesting. There's no bubbles, no fish showing, nothing at all anywhere, no liners. It's almost as if a pack of fish have come through the peg over the course of about an hour and they've literally just swum through and they've either cleared me out or alternatively they've been spooked off. But that's it now. Sun's about to come up. I reckon we probably get about another half an hour to an hour of bite chance left. But as soon as that sun's on this water, you know, it's three and a half, four foot deep, crystal clear. I reckon chances are gone. Nick has just caught one. Uh, so his swim's really interesting too. He stopped fishing just uh, just so we could experiment with that left hand rod. And that seems to be going off as well. So, uh, yeah, I think there's going to be some interesting findings today. Well, here's one of the ones from last night. In fact, this was the last one of the three bites. Only little ones, all of them about the same size actually, just come through as a little pack. But uh, yeah, 
There we go. Lovely summer tench. So as you can see, it's got really quite bright now. The sun's come out and um, we were just having a conversation saying that that's the last of our chances or so we thought because the right hand run buffed off, um, which is a surprise. Um, I anticipated it was going to be the left, the hot rod that keeps going. And I'm pretty sure that there's something wrong with that rod. Um, I cast it out and it went just slightly left which I didn't mind because I've seen a lot of activity that side of the swim. But I'm thinking now I should have given it a recast because I feel like there's something wrong with that rod. And we're going to have the opportunity to find out because Rob's going to go into the lake and have a look for us. Right, we have some conclusions. Interesting ones they are as well, and there's lots to learn from this. First and foremost, yeah. rig on the left-hand side, haven't had a bite, you've been done on it. Yeah. 100% you've yeah. been done on it, you've been picked up and dropped. I mean, we thought that, we weren't sure, I might have cast into weed or something yeah. like that, but I think we suspected that I'd just been done. I think the cast was absolutely perfect. There was no problem with where it was. Actually, it's still fishy now, it's just a single bait on its own. But I think it's been marked, it's been picked up and dropped. And I think the key reason it wasn't a full bite is the fish are feeding just that little bit more finicky. Maybe they've been caught, yeah. maybe their mates have been caught this morning a little bit. Yeah. So that's upset them a bit and they're feeding slightly differently. But your line lay going through that weed has affected your indication. Yes. So, you know, you, you might have had a little up and down or what you thought was a... I had one last night I thought was a drop back. Yeah. But of course, how can I tell whether it's dropped back or not really, when I've got a bank of weed in front of me that I'm fishing over. It's That's it. It's, it's six of one and half a dozen of the other. Oh. If the weed bed wasn't there, then you'd have better line lay, but actually it would mean that that spot is slightly harder to get into or and easier I'll, to get into. And it's and I'll always just try and fish where the fish are. Yeah, exactly. You could see they were there yesterday. So done, done the right thing, but interesting to see what's happened with that. Basically, fish have come in. There is no bait anywhere. Nothing. Uh, well, the odd one or two, two mils, but literally nothing in comparison with what you put in, because you put quite a lot in. Yeah. They've cleared the lot out. There's, yeah. There's no there. Yeah, so, I mean, normally uh, I'd have put much more in, I think. Yes. Literally after every fish, it would have been two spots over each rod. Yeah. And I think, you know, it would have been consistent action through the night, spotting through the night, and you could have caught as yeah, many as just, you want. Just keeping them going. And it just yeah. goes to show that actually, if you're not having a bite and you think you should have done, the best thing to do is recast. And that is an absolute golden rule. Remember that, guys, an absolute golden rule yeah. that if you think you should have had a bite and you haven't, just chuck it back out I mean, usually again. we would have re-chucked that, wouldn't yeah. we? But we wanted to go and have a look at it. Absolutely. But Interesting looking at the right-hand spot as well, the gravel that didn't produce as many fish early on, but actually started kicking in this morning, you can see that they've moved over there. So I think they've literally just come in from the left-hand side. There's no evidence of that. The, this is just your, what you think's happened. My supposition, yeah. but it's a little bit like tracking through a forest that, sure. you know, you can see the way animals move. You can see the way that they do yeah. things. I can see where they fed because you can see the dust has been cleared off the top okay. of the gravel areas. Yeah. So what I personally think has happened is that they've moved in from the left-hand side. It's a lovely forest under there. You can see why they like it much so much. softer on the left, isn't it? Well, the, the, the weeds themselves, so much oh, easier okay. for fish to live in there. So I think they spend the days in that weed. Yeah. And then they come out because it's literally like trees. What's it like at the bottom under the water? Just like trees in the forest. Is it really so you've got a thin? Big, big canopy above you and just But not particularly thin thick at the bottom? No. No. So they'll all be under there. It's nice and dark, lovely and yeah. easy. They've moved that. They found a load of bait. They've started feeding on that first. And then they've and eventually, across to the right. Yeah, when everything's been eaten, it's drifted over and, and you've started picking them up on the right hand side. Yeah. And then they've just gone back in again. Um, it's interesting. So, yeah, very, very but interesting. But it's still movements. fishing. It's possible but unlikely to get a bite. Now. It'll take a while, but yeah. I just think, you know, it'd be much better if it was recharged. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah. So let's go through three things. What are the three biggest things that you've picked up from this trip? Well, I think um, definitely once you start getting bites, keep the bait going in. Yep. You know, uh, don't start off with too much bait, yeah. but little and often, which is how I tend to fish. Um, but the fact that it's completely gone tells me that 
yes. Yeah, it needed to keep going in. Yep. Ah. Uh, Number two. The, the spot within a spot. The, the, how isolated that left-hand spot was for quite a prolonged period. So often we see it, don't we, when we're fishing, that one rod does all the bites. Yes. So when you cast slightly to the left of that, rather than bang on it... Yeah, only a yard. Yeah, it made a huge difference. Massive difference. It? Yeah. So when you've got somewhere that works, keep working it. Don't change it, just keep yeah. working it, whatever and, it is. And on, the, and on the flip side of that, I guess, if you're in a swim, before you write off that swim, because you haven't any, had, any, had any bites, yep. make sure that you've explored the entire swim. Absolutely, try all sorts of places, yeah. because there may be a spot within the area that you're looking yeah. at that is the, the, the honey spot. Really is, yeah. absolutely, yeah. yeah. So yeah. there we go. Right, very, very interesting findings. Hope you've learned something at home with that. I've definitely learned something. I'm sure Absolutely you have as well. Have, yeah. It's always a pleasure going underwater and it's great to be doing it now for tench uh, as well as carp and match fishing too. So uh, yeah, plenty more of this to come, I think, in the future. Be really good. So what a crazy hour or so we've had this morning. Three stunning tench. Um, it's, it's, I've really enjoyed the process. I've learnt an awful lot, uh, a lot for me to take into my future sessions and uh, yeah, it's a privilege to have been part of it. What a fantastic way to end the session.